God, we hear this very often, Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. And says, though the earth give way, the mountains fall into the sea. Uh, we do see the earth giving way. Now we see, you know, um, fire, drought, and, you know, the all that the climate changes. The earth is giving way. And, you know, the, um, and it's, it was three, though its waters roar and foam. I mean, I can remember, it's just, recall, it's a tsunami. You know, the mountains quake with their surging. You know, it sounds like, perhaps it's a, the, the, the mountains is shaking. The volcano is being activated. Yet, verse 4, there is a river whose streams make, make, make glad um, the city, the, uh, make glad the city of God, <clears throat> the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. So this her is referring to um, in Israel, you know, the, the city, the city of, of, of Jerusalem. You know, it's the way, that's where um, God dwells. That, was, that is the holy place where he, he will dwell. And you know, whatever happens around, she will not fall uh, because God will help Israel at the break of the day. And, you know, um, nations will are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. When the, you know, when, and then it goes on saying, when there's war, he makes war cease. And, you know, he burns the shields of fire. God can do all these things. But right now, at our current situation, I think about it, you know, sometimes in our family, war between our relatives, our siblings, you know, and yet, we don't see peace, but you know, are we able to be like um, you know, like like what the 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 the, the singer um the song says the song that I shared earlier on even if you know even if you know um you know even if he doesn't do it I mean can I still can you still put hope in him? So that that's the question you know he has been faithful you know and I will cling to you. Come what may, you know, whether um, the war continues to go on within our family, you know, even um, within um, nations, you know, I know God is able to stop it. I know he can because his word says so. You know, and it's, it's just, he just needs to speak. He speaks things into creation and things are created. He can speak and a war cease, and you know, all the um, um, tension between family members cease. Um, but, you know, um, even if he doesn't do it, um, you know, our hope is still in him. Our trust is not shaken. We have a firm foundation in him. And just want to just encourage all of you to, you know, um, even if you're in that storm, you see it, you know, the mountains shaking and you're in it. And yet you don't, you don't see a way out at the point of part time. God puts us in situation to grow us, you know, um, but yet, you know, we want to, and be in the position, in the posture to still be able to praise him, to say, yes, God, no matter what, even you don't deliver me now immediately, I will still praise you. I will still worship you. And my hope is still in you because you are my rock. You are my foundation. And so let's just lift our voice and not just to give thanks to him. Lord, I just want to give thanks to you for the word that you have revealed to me. That Lord, even when you say, be still um, and know that I am God, I will be still, it's not sitting in a sofa, you know, watching um, movies and watching Netflix or just sitting there and, and being sad. But Lord, we still be still and know that I'm God. We will exalt your name, we will lift your name up high. We will still, in all circumstances, we will lift your name up high. Even though we see sometimes when our nations are not governed, um, you know, by righteous, by righteousness, we will still continue to lift your name up high. And we just want to ask that Lord in our family members, any tension even between um, parents and, and children, Lord, even though we don't see um, that being resolved, and Lord, our grown-up children may not, um, you know, um, um, have any um, respect with us Lord, or, or they may have gone in a wayward way but Lord we will trust in you we will continue to lift you and praise you our role Lord is to um, be on our knees to worship you to pray and not to speak a word of life into these people in our family members into the, our community into our church into our nation so Lord we come before you we stand here we want to speak 
I want to speak to, 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 to our nations that our nation here in Australia will be built on your firm foundation, on your rock, that Lord, we will remember our covenant that we have made with you from our forefathers, those who have came here and those who have um, lived in this place way, way before us, they have made a covenant before you and we pray you will help us, Lord, to remember those covenants that's made and to continue to um. Um, honor you in all that we do. We honor you in our personal life. We honor you in our family. We honor you at our church, our community that we live, and the state and nation where you put us in now, right now, wherever we are represented. So, Lord, we want to lift your name up high. No matter what the season may be, we will be uh, facing a cold winter, you know, and in a spiritual um, uh, way. But Lord, we know um, you are um, giving us warmth. You are protecting us. Even though, Lord, we are facing a, a very a so hot and, and, and um, dry summer. And Lord, the heat is very intense. And Lord, you are our shield. You will protect us. And that, Lord, you will guide our steps so that we will be steered away from danger. But yet we can see your hands at work, your miracles being um, perform in our life, in the life of our family, Lord, in the life of our community. And Lord, we want to ask that, Lord, you will bless uh, the nation where we come from, the nation that we're living in right now. And Lord, bless uh, the nation, Lord. And we want to also bless Israel, for Israel is your, you know, your, 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 your nation. It is, and we want to bless Jerusalem, the city that you dwell in. So, Lord, I want to uphold the rest of the time to you and want to um, ask that, Lord, you will speak to um, Pastor Julia and whatever you have put in her heart, that you help her to be able to articulate and share with us the word of the season so that we may be encouraged, that we may be, we may be strengthened and we may be prepared for what is to come in the different seasons of our life. Bless her, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Over to you, Pastor Julia. Hallelujah, 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 and glory to God. Beautiful morning to be here this morning. Blessed of the Lord. You know, church, I don't know about you, but personally for me, I feel I'm already so edified, so blessed just from the time we started this altar just a couple of minutes ago. I just feel the Lord has truly, Lord, our God truly, really knows us by name, by circumstance, by house, by job by where you are, by your inside, by your outside. He knows your condition. You know, the Bible says that God is spirit. And so when he is spirit, spirit really doesn't, a spirit, I don't know, spirit means a spirit doesn't have to have a body to be able to be where you are. Spirit means he is wherever you are all the time. You know why I'm saying this? Because I'm excited. Just because of what I have had the Lord take us from the minute we started to this moment, I'm excited because our sister has, sat, has started by sharing powerful songs. And I want to start by sharing a very small little testimony. Now, yesterday, even yesterday, I came home. I just had a busy day. I think I had worked the previous night. So when I came home, I did so many things. And then I would go and lie down during the day, just late in the evening, just because I had not had a rest the whole day. So th throughout that whole day, Church of God, we're going to have to be real in this life and in our walk of faith with God. We've been telling ourselves we need to bring testimonies and speak of what the Lord is doing for us. And so for me, yesterday was a day, was a mix-up day. All, everything that could happen is happening round about me and things that I just have don't have control. I can't control it. I just feel my heart was burdened and heavy, just so, so, so heavy. And so through the day, I walked through the day. I prepared all what you do at home just very well. But then I went to lie down. And at the time of lying down is when I'm looking at things, trying to read the word of God, want to go and get some time to pray. And so that then I can go and rest. Church, you're going to have to be real. And in this platform, I want us, I want us the Lord to help us to start being real. Church, there are times we start, we read this word. And when we read this word, we are not really getting into our circumstances. We reading the word, the word speaks of circumstances in the past, about people, about situations. But what about you? What is your circumstance in your day, in your time, at the time you are speaking, at the time you are at? What's your circumstance? That's what the Lord wants to hear. The Lord wants to hear that circumstance for you. This one was written for us to inspire us. It was walked through by other men and women like you and me. But what about you in your day and in your 
time, in your family, in your situation? What is it that is in your heart? What, how is your life like, church? You're going to have to be real with God. Bring real things on the table. Bring real circumstances in your life and release them to the Lord. Let him, let him, let him hear you in your times of prayer and in times of testimony when you want to bring it out and let no fear, church. There is no fear. Let me finish my little testimony. So I am got so many things around about me. Some of them, uh, we all understand that uh, I think on this, back home where we come from, it's school holiday time. So kids and everybody is at home. And so there's all that going on. And that comes with it, all the burdens and all the needs that come around that, they're all flying in like, like Mr. They're all flying in. They're all flying in. All at the same time, they are flying in. All these things. And Alice, we have been spot on. The Spirit of God has been spot on. Things, you know, we come from families. We're in families. We're in community. We're in people. We're in things. So I went to bed. I read a few words. I couldn't even read them properly. I went to bed and I just told the Lord, this is too much. Now, Lord, I can't handle this. This is too much. And you know what is too much? Because even the finances that are coming, need of finances is beyond me. I, You know, I don't have it. I just don't have this. What I have is what you've given me. So if the need is beyond what you have given me, I just don't know what to do. I just sleep. I just trust in you and I'm going to go and sleep. It's too much. So that was me. And that's how I went to bed last night. So you can see that that's a situation of where you get to a point of, um, of surrender. You, you're defeated. You can't make it. So that's it. The need is too much. So you just leave it because what can you do? You trust God and you tell him, Lord, I can't do this. And you know it. And let me just rest. Just give me a good rest. So that's how I went to bed last night. So when Alice wakes up this morning with some beautiful, powerful worship, I know all of us who've been in that worship, we have listened. So after I'm listening it word by word, I am hearing the Lord talk to me. So from now, I want to talk to you and encourage you about what we come to do this morning. So that's how I went to bed last night. And that's how we have woken up this morning. You, have, you can attest to the songs, to the messages that Alice has read this morning. Word by word, they are ministering to my heart. Word by word, the Lord is speaking to me. Word by word. And I wrote down a few of all those things that we have had to learn, to learn this morning. Word by word, we sang songs and we said, he's never let me down. He won't now. Did you hear? He has never let me. It's a song we were singing. He will never let me down and he won't now. And the song continues to say, no, 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 no. You know, that song is speaking to me. You know, that's me. I'm, it's, the spirit is telling me, my Lord has never let me down. No, 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 no. He won't let me down. That's the song we sang. And it continues to say that Christ is my firm foundation. When everything is shaking, church, did you hear? When everything is shaking, I put my faith in the Lord. Don't you remember? Now, with my testimony, that's what I am hearing. God, church, there's a God who answers you. Where you are at, God knows you. You do not have some times to, to, to really cry out or whatnot. He knows where you are at. And the thought continues to say, I put my faith in Jesus because he's never let me down. And the, the song continues to say, rain came and the wind blew. Isn't that what I'm talking about now? Isn't that my real testimony? And the Bible says, even though all that came, I'm saving you. I am saving you. I am going to make it through. I am going to make it through. And through all those circumstances that I've mentioned, circumstances that I've mentioned in my personal life right now, I am now, if the Lord is telling me, I am going to make through all of them. And I want to attest to you here. You do not know the exact circumstances that was in my heart last night. But now with this morning, I'm telling you, I am speaking it before the Lord. I'm going to make through all of them because the Lord has ministered and he's ministering to my heart. And telling me, Julia, all those things that were you were in your mind yesterday, I am go you are going to make through all of them. That's what the Lord has spoken. I didn't speak in nothing. I didn't say nothing. But the Lord spoke to my heart. And he says that I, my life was built. I'm saying my life is built on you. He has, and the song finished. No, 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 no. He's never let me down. No, 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 no. He won't now. <laughs> ha. Me, I want to tell you, we want to love this God. I want to love this God. I want to, we want to love this God. He's spoken to my heart clearly this morning. We continued to sing. We went to another song, church. We went to another song. And the next song said, I know you can save me. Even if you don't, my hope is in you. Did you hear the next song? I know you can save me. Even if you won't, 
That is, I know, my hope is in you. I know, Lord, you can save me. Oh, you can set, you can set all these circumstances. You can settle them. My hope is in you. You've been faithful. We sang on and on and on and on. You have been so, so, so faithful. Jesus, I'll cling to you. I wrote them down. I will cling to you. Because already the Lord has ministered and said, I know you are able. We continued to sing. My hope is in you. I know you are able. Church, are you like me? Alice went on to read Psalm 46. She went on to read Psalm 46. The Spirit is reminding us. Psalm 46, I am still basing this on my testimony, on my circumstances right now. And she started by saying, the God, the Lord is my, my, my refuge and my strength, I will not fear. I think I'm not going back to that. But I want to, in few words, say that God knows your circumstance. Be real in this life. Be real to him. He knows you. He'll come down. He'll encourage you. And out of that encouragement, now I am as I am strengthened. I'll rise up, I'll go, and I know I am speaking to myself and say, the Lord has spoken to me. I'll face this day, I'll face all the circumstances that, that, that come my way. My God has told me, He's never let me down. He will not never let me down. Not now. I know that's me, church. And I know you too, you are like me. I know you too are in circumstances like I am. I know we are in circumstances. This morning, the ministry has already gone through, has spoken to all of us. I know it's you and you, just a different version of your circumstances like mine, just a different version. This morning, the spirit has powerfully ministered to say, he will not let you down, church. I want you and me like me, take move out and go and do what you have to do, knowing too well that this God has never let you down. He won't now. And we say, no, 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 no. He won't let us down now. He won't let us, even as an altar, even as a ministry. He has never, he won't. We have stood out and he has come this every morning to strengthen us and to tell us he's there. He won't let you down now, church, in the name of Jesus. Let us go to share one or two words here, just on the same, 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 same foundation. A few words that the Lord has put in my spirit, just on the same, same, same foundation. Quickly, let us go to the book of Romans 8 and verse number 14. Romans 8, verse number 14. We can go home, we are blessed, and we can face any challenge, anything that is in front of us, we can face it. It's already well done in, our, in the heart of our Father this morning. Romans 8 and verse number 14. I'll read this is just like a memory verse for us. We read this all the time, but every time we read it, the Lord releases new light, new light upon it, new light upon it. So Romans 14, Romans 8, 14. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. Verse 15. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him, we cry, Abba, Father. I believe this is the same, same, same message that we have, have the foundation on. And I believe this is what the Spirit of God is preparing us for today. And I believe the Lord is powerful on this altar and on this heart today that we believe. Because it is the same, same message that the Lord is coming to encourage me in my circumstance, you in your circumstance, us in our circumstances. So the Spirit says that the Spirit you received, you, that spirit does not make you a slave again, but that spirit, it does not make you to fear again. I believe I'm speaking to me. Like I said, I slept in those all those challenges, but I now being reminded the spirit that is within me does not make me to fear. It is now as a, as a way of the Lord encouraging us. There could be, and I don't know, there could be a spirit of weariness in our midst when the spirit comes to speak this way. There is a situation we are in. It could be a general situation that is falling upon many of us, a situation that would have kind of things that can make you feel that you are being worn down by things in your life, by things that are surrounding you. When that is the circumstance, to them that are children of God, God knows how to address that situation. And he comes down in his power, in his authority, in his spirit, and he ministers to his children. He strengthens them up, he lifts them up, and he makes them ground again. However, you must know that you are a child of God to be able to experience this and to walk on this. So as we are sharing this, just know there is a, there is an atmosphere we are in and the Lord our God is dealing with it right from the back and up and down everywhere to combat it because the Lord is jealous with his own. He is jealous with his altar. This altar is our Lord Jesus. The Lord himself 
guard his own. He is jealous and he will make sure that his own stands. You must be a child, a, a son and a daughter. We started by saying for those who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. Let me quickly go down to where I'm heading to. So rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. In fact, that's our message for today. Brought your adoption to sonship. The spirit that is within you brought your adoption. Church, allow me one minute to speak about the word adoption. This has been my spirit. All along, I'm going through all this. Since yesterday, a few days, one week, it's been learning in my spirit. Adoption. The Bible says that the spirit we received, that spirit brought about your adoption to sonship. So, one minute, adoption. Every time you hear the word adopt, come, it comes from the word adopt, adoption, adopt. This one tells you and tells me that there is a person or a situation that did not belong there. Someone did not belong there, but now they have been brought from afar and they have been brought into a place or a family. And now they have been made to become like one of those with the full rights, with the full responsibility, with the full ownership, fullness in everything complete. So every time you hear the word adopt, it means adoption. So we are talking about a situation or a person, let's use a person for this situation, who has come from far and this person has been brought and has been made to fit in an atmosphere and a circumstance. So I don't have time to go back to the history of the children of Israel and adoption story to start from there. But let us just deal with what we have on in front of us. So when the Bible says that the spirit that you received brought about your adoption to sonship. So the spirit of God, remember, this is speaking about you and me. This is making you to stand in a position where you can already be, you can already be owned. You can be owned. You can belong. So we are talking about us. We've been adopted to a place that we did not belong. So you and I are coming from afar and a place that did not belong to us. We started by saying we are not slaves, uh, slaves again to fear. So we have been adopted by the spirit into a place of sonship. So all what we are talking this morning that our God has already ministered to us is because we, he, is, there's a place we confessed to Jesus. There's a place we got marked with the blood of Jesus. And just we are saying this, we are a work in progress. We are work in progress. We are seeking with trembling and with fear, still working out our salvation because we are a work in progress. But but we know there's a time that our life turn around, turned around. When we confess Jesus, you receive that spirit. Through that spirit, you started being qualified into a sonship spirit. You started to walk on the sonship spirit. Number one, when you receive that position, now for us, there is no way you can come from afar or from a different family and come into a family of adoption. Let us use the terms that we can understand. You are coming from a different family and you have been adopted into a family. What this one means for you is that when you are adopted into that family, now it means you are a part and a pastor of that family. You are a family member. So we, as believers of today, when we are adopted into sonship, there are rules and regulations that govern us there. We are governed by the conditions of that family. We have been put into that family, so we must fit into that family. We must stop all what we brought from the past family that we were in. Now all those conditions do not apply to the family that we have been brought in. So everything is left behind. We now take over what is new in this family. So church, we must start learning to adopt into the things and lifestyles of this family. We must learn the rules that govern this family. We must learn the conditions of this family. We must learn which food do they eat in this family. We must learn how do they eat in this family. We must learn who is the head of this family because someone has adopted you. When someone adopts you, let me tell you, speak here and say that the, um, the siblings don't adopt you. Siblings in that family don't adopt you. The responsible adult in that family adopts you. He has he is the one who has the right of this family. So he is the one who goes to court and to places and he says, I, Julia, I am adopting this person to be part of this family. So when you come in this family, the siblings who fight in that family did not adopt you. You become a part of those of, of them. You join them, you become a part. But there is one who has the full responsibility, has taken 
responsibility to adopt you. We don't have time. I, want, I would have wanted to stick there. But church, when we stick and we, we are adopted, there are conditions that we must meet. Now, conditions for our adoption today is that we must we must comply to the rules of our kingdom, the kingdom of our father who has adopted us. We cannot continue living carelessly like the world that we came from. We cannot live like where we came from. In that other world where we came from, there are things that pulled us down. There are things that dis disentangled us. There are things that separated us from the love of God. There are things that we had already come, we had grown a certain way. We had been brought up a certain way. We would have been rough in that area. There was no love there was no responsibility in that area just because that was different but now when we come here number one this print highest order this print of the highest order in the family we are adopted in number one in our family of adoption to sonship when you become a son you must adopt the discipline of that family number one you have become a son so everything that they do you do Everything that they live, how they live, you live that way. So church, we've got, we usually have a lesson. We have, we have got some time to learn. So you sit down because you have been adopted from afar. You start watching and see how do they live here? So you've got, you're going to go to a classroom now. You're going to go to a classroom. And you, it is good if you take a book and a pen and you start even writing things down because you want to be a quick student. You can learn things quick of the family you have adopted. You have been adopted too. So you learn how do they wake up in the morning? Ah, they wake up five o'clock in the morning. They are up. It's two early in the morning. I feel like I just want to sleep. I feel like I can't wake up. But in the family, in my family of adoption, they are disciplinedly. They are disciplined. They wake up five o'clock. And what are they doing when they wake up? When they wake up, they've got a they've got there are things they do. What do they do? I want to just align myself. You're gonna have to align yourself with that. Those are the, the kingdom of my father who adopted me. That's how it goes. Then what happens through the day? So through the day, when five o'clock we wake up, and so seven, six o'clock they go to work. So this is a kingdom of working hard. I must work hard with my hands so that I can provide. So what do they do when they go to work? They go, they get things A, B, C, D, they meet with the people. There's a way they talk, there's a language of talking. There's a language in my family of adoption. There's a language. Which is this language? This language is the word of God that I have learned. There's a word that they learn in this family. Which is this word? Is the word of God. There's a language. And because they have learned this word for a long time, there's a way they talk. There's a language. There's a speech. There's a language. There's a, do you know just you people like the way we speak English like now or we speak we speak Kuyu, or we speak Swahili, or we speak that language. There's a language of our kingdom. There's a language of our kingdom. So you must learn the language of your kingdom. You must learn the language. The language of our kingdom is the word of God. The language is by the spirit. I must learn quickly so that I, I can adopt words to be speaking in my family of adoption. That language is all here. So I must go to class. I must learn it. I must study the word. I must flow out from me, flows out the word. What else do they do? They are disciplined people. They know how to interact with other people. They know how, when they are in the midst of other people, how do they look like? How do they present themselves? How do they walk? Even walking, it's, you people, do you even know how, you know even walking is, is a big thing. Do you see, sometimes there's a walk style you can walk and that you are just carelessly. But in our kingdom, we walk, we are, we are serious, we are determined people, we are, we are, we, are, we, are, we are in the presence of our God. There's a way we present ourselves. There's a way even we walk. There's a way we can't walk carelessly, just walking anywhere. We can't get into every household, into every street, into every corner. No, that's not what they do. In our kingdom, there, there, are, way, there are ways. And there's a way of, of living. There's a way of walking. Church, adoption. When we are adopted into a family, that's how we live. And when, I'm cutting short because we don't have time. When we start fitting into this family, now you start relaxing. Now we, you start flowing in this family. Now for you, it's not a struggle anymore to live in this family. It is just second to nature. Now you have fitted in. Now you have learned how they live. You have learned how to eat their food their food, the word of God, you have learned how even to interpret, you know how now to use that word, you are used even to release that word, now you have continued to assimilate, you've been assimilated into that family, now you start also to understand to listen, now you start to listen to the responsible adult in this family, now we start to learn a language, there is a language, we know who our responsible adult is, 
quickly go back to that book of Romans where we read, Romans 8. And now you start to understand Romans, Romans 8. We say it verse number 15. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him, we cry, Abba, Father. By him, we cry, Abba, Father. By him, we recognize who is the head of this family. We recognize him. And the minute we recognize him, we start to develop an easiness with him. That responsible adult, our father becomes a name of our day to day's use. We can call him Abba Father. So because now I recognize you adopted me, I recognize how I have come to be in this family. Now I have a special role for this person who has adopted me. If he has adopted me, there is nothing he cannot do for me. If he has brought in and through Christ Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit, I've been made to fit in. I have also had to, to you know, just to make myself know that this, this is where I belong. So now out of that, my language has changed. Now, if I used to call other names out there, now that has changed. And now I started calling my figure of adoption becomes my lifeline. My figure of adoption. And so by him, I call Abba Father. So Abba Father is our God, is our figure, is our responsible adult, is our God, is the creator, is the, our Jehovah the provider. He is Jehovah our protection. He is Jehovah our salvation. He is Jehovah everything that you know that you need. As I started by sharing yesterday my condition. So that me, if I know that I have Abba Father, now in all circumstances of my day, there is one who adopted me. I can trust him to carry me through this day. I can trust him through the, my circumstances. I want to quickly go with you to the book of Mark 14. If you have time, quickly, let's, we, we have one minute. Mark 14. When you realize that he is Abba, Father, it doesn't matter the circumstance. It doesn't matter. Jesus himself, Mark 14 and verse number 36. 35 and 36, I'll read quickly. 35 and 36. Go a little further. He fell to his ground. This is Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and he prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Verse 36, Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Church, we said, that when we are adopted, there is the responsible family figure who adopted us. Jesus is our big brother. Together with him, Abba is our father. And so Jesus called up to his father. You and I have, through Christ Jesus, been given the same, 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 same uh, process and position to call upon Abba Father. And so he called Abba Father when he was in a difficult situation. There is a father who's called you into a calling through whom you can call. When you call, he hears. Amber. Next time I come back here, we shall talk about this name, Amber. But Amber is the father of our adoption. We must learn that language, a language to call every day, day in, day out. Abba, Father. Galatians 4, quickly, let's go to Galatians 4. Galatians 4 and verse number, Galatians 4. And I'm going to go and read verse number 4. Galatians 4. Let me, um, for, I don't have time. I could have read a few more of these verses. Uh, but it's just four, five, and six. Let me quickly read. But when, you, when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. We could stick there, but let us go further on. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who calls out Abba, Father. This is Paul now giving us further explanation. Now Paul, remember Jesus has come and gone. But so Paul is like you and me living in the days of the Holy Spirit. He says, Paul says, through 
through that spirit, now, this is the, through that spirit, we can now call out Abba Father. You can call on a father, child of God today, as we go to complete. And I, I want to promise I'll come back to this because now time is spent. We want to come to Abba Father. We want to come to a place of our adoption. Understand that we are not those that used to live that way those days. But today we have been called into a family. Our family, our family figure, our family father is God, our creator. This morning, he allows you and reminds you that the access to what he has been opened up for you and for me. So the circumstances that surround you today, like surround, like are surrounding me today, you can present him. He adopted you. By adoption, someone says, and I think I'm speaking a lot at secular language that we speak. When you adopt someone, you go and swear some, somewhere that you shall look after him in every way. Everything, you look after him, you are responsible. That's the language you use here in court when we do, we do these things. What about our father? It means that everything you have, he can cater for. I want to finish here by doing a few prayer items. Church, today, this morning, we are not often the children. No, we are not. We are children that belong to our family. Our family is, we have Abba as our father. This morning, I don't know what is in your heart and in my heart, church. Remember, we have I've read for you where Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane. Church, what is heavier? He was facing death at the time. You may be in a situation which you think is hard. Church, I want to tell you, Jesus found himself in those, in those shoes. It was hard for him, but he called Abba Father. This is to tell you and me that all of us, us, can call upon Abba Father. Jesus called, who are you not to call upon that name, upon that Amber? And I want to tell you, the minute we recognize the power of this name, all those things that are surrounding you, we shall do them. He will not fail you. He adopted you. He cannot fail you. He said, I've got everything to cater for them. I cannot fail you. Not now. That is our Lord, Amber Father. Let us finish there and pray this morning. And ask that in the name of Jesus, you are like me and you are like, like me. I know you are there in your circumstance where you feel that you are pushed right in the corner. You don't know which way, but you are trusting in your heart. You are feeling that there's a way that you know that God will make you pass through this. I have come this morning to tell you that you are right. Abba Father is your father of adoption. He will meet. He is able to meet all your needs. This morning, don't cry. Don't be discouraged. Release those needs to Abba Father. He is your father who adopted you and he signed paperwork through the blood of Jesus and he said I will be able to cater for her I'll look after her even if it's a hundred thousand dollars I have got it even if it is twenty thousand dollars I have got it even if they were sick I've got their healing already secured in Christ my Lord already this morning I am praying about that issue of providence where there's so much need round about us you need to provide this ABCD church in provision I'm talking about finances I'm talking about what you are supposed to, pro to provide as an adult. Maybe there are many people who are looking at you to provide. You are stressed back and forth, but you feel you don't even have it anymore. It's too much round about you. This morning, I'm coming here to say that Abba Father has got it for you. Release it all unto him. Kneel down and tell him, Abba Father. Just call out that name. That's in a prayer. Don't even pray many things. Just go and tell him, Abba, my father. Amber, my father, I call upon you, Amber. I know you are there. You would call me into your family, Abba, Father. Just pray that way. Lord, in all these circumstances, we call you Amber. We call you Abba, Father, this morning. We call you round about us, Lord, in our homes, in our families, at the altar, our God. On the Abba, we call Amber. We call you Abba, Father. Yes, Lord, we call you this morning. Yes, Lord, we call you. Humble Father, yes, Lord, we call you. Thank you, Father, we call you. Thank you, Abba. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In every situation, Abba Father. In that sickness, Abba Father. In that financial situation, Abba Father. In that family situation, Abba Father. In that sibling situation, Abba Father. In that parent situation, Abba Father. In this spouse situation, Abba Father. In this children situation, Abba Father. In this job situation, Abba Father. All the situations this morning, Abba Father, in the day we are just getting into, the night we are just getting into, 
Abba Father, our Abba, yes, Abba, yes, Abba, Abba Father, Abba Father, Abba Father, Abba, yes, Lord, we call you Abba Father. It is well with our souls. Thank you for adoption. Thank you for positioning us. Thank you for raising us up. Thank you for calling us into your family. Abba, Father, we call you. We thank you. We bless your name. We lift your name on high. Abba, Father. Abba, Father. Abba, Father. In Christ our Lord and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we do call out and we do believe in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Back to you, Alice. Pastor Julia for the word. Yes, we can count on our Father, even if our Father, in the, you know, when our Father loves us, when we call upon Him, you know, He is there to listen. So uh, trust in Him that His hands are not too far from us. And just want to um, remind each other that next Friday there is a, a prayer service um, at um, third road and our place where we meet on the evening friday evening the last friday of the month so pastor julia will be sending out um the um the notes you know the reminders for the fasting and prayer um on for wednesday to friday there'll be a three-day fast and prayer so we'll close the time now uh, with the benediction um from second corinthians chapter 13 to four, uh, ch chapter 13 verse 14 may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all so go uh, with the knowledge and, and, and reminded that we are have been adopted we have been adopted as uh, sons and daughters of our God God bless you and have a good day at work and uh, wherever that you do and then meet your family see you again on Monday God bless you and for those who can meet tomorrow um, at uh, Goodwood Road we'll be meeting to study uh, the word of God God bless you <laughs>